All right, so you've made it to what I believe should be the last episode. So let's head on to our layout section here. And I'm just gonna open up the bottom and I'm gonna switch this to a timeline. So finally, we've reached the end of our journey here. I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to create an empty and I'm just gonna scale this empty up so we can see it. And I also need to add a camera into our scene. So we'll do that. You can see it spawns there. And if I hit N, I can go over here and zero out my rotations and then hit R, X. And then I want to snap it to about 70 degrees. And then we're gonna bring it back on the Y and then up in the Z. And I can see now that uh, that's a really big tonic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab it and scale it down so it's not so large. Uh, it's maybe somewhere around there and hit rotation and scale just to apply all of those values of the rotation and the scaling that I may have applied. And then I'm going to hit zero on the keyboard to see the location of my camera and I'll hit G Z and then uh, hold on G Z and then move it down. And then I'm going to hit G click the middle mouse button in and zoom in G Z move it up a little bit. And then over here on the side, I'm going to change my render dimensions inside my output property setting from 1920 by 1080 to uh, 1080 by 1920. I wish there was just a button that I could hit in order to switch those, but alas, there is not. And then I'll just hit G and then middle mouse button and zoom in a little more to get that detail on the tonic. And I think that looks like a decent framing, maybe a little, little bit tighter in. There we go. And then what I can do is let me check the camera settings. I can kind of zoom in and make this more of a portrait at 80 millimeters, hit G middle mouse button, and bring it back. And that just kind of flattens out the perspective a little bit. Um, 50 millimeters on the focal length there is going to give us something closer to the human eye. 80 millimeters is going to give us something closer to camera portraiture. And so in this sort of composition, I think that's a little bit better. Uh, but it's widely subjective and up to personal preference, so do however you see fit here. Most people like to leave it at 50 millimeters, I suppose, but in this case, I'm going to art direct it to 80 millimeters. All right, and then what I need to do is I need to select the camera, and then I'm going to shift select this empty here. Uh, make sure that the empty is the one that's selected and not the camera, so you can see how it shifted from that orange to that um, that uh, yellow. And now I'm going to hit control P and say parent to object. And that means that the camera is going to follow this object here. So if I rotate it, it's going to rotate the camera. And so now what I can do is click this jump to endpoint with the empty selected. I'm going to hit I and say location. And then I'm going to go to frame 300 because I want this to be a five second animation. And we're going to jump over to frame 300 and with the empty selected i'm going to say rz 360 so it rotates all the way around and hit i and say rotation i'm going to right click this keyframe i'm going to say interpolation mode linear now what we just did there is we created a 360 degree rotational camera going around the tonic that we just created and essentially what we did with the interpolation of the keyframe is instead of allowing it to ease in and out, which is what it is by default, we made sure that it was linear. So that way when we rotate around our um, tonic 3D model object, it will do so seamlessly um, once we remove one frame off of the end of our 300 frame animation. So now if I click back here and I hit zero and then I press play, oops, am I in the camera? Is it actually rotating? Don't think it is. So let me see here. What are the values? So for some reason I messed something up. Let's see. This value should be RZ0. Zero. zero. Okay. And I'm going to hit I and say rotation. So for some reason, uh, the keyframe rotation on the first one got uh, copied over with the 360. I'm not sure why it did that, but now it should be fixed now that I have reset that. And here, if we press this, you can see here, uh, there it goes. And I'm going to select both of these. Again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say interpolation mode linear. And again, that's just to make it constant. It's going to constantly rotate around this tonic. And it is actually a lot slower. And that's because we're going at 30 FPS. So this is currently a 10 second animation. I want it to be a five second animation. 
So I can change my frame rate. It's actually, it's actually 24 and not 30. So I'm gonna change this to 60. So we get a nice smooth animation. It's gonna go much faster now, but it is also going to follow around our object. And there we go. And now it will rotate around this forever. If I wanted to make it a little bit slower, what I can do is make this a 600 frame animation. I could open this up here and I could grab this empty and I could drag this just this keyframe right here all the way out to 600 and then set this to 599 and there we go we have a 10 frame 60 fps animation that's going a little bit slower around our model i think that's a little bit of a better speed and there's actually one thing i wanted to do i know i said we were just going to go to rotation now and cameras and all that uh there's one little tiny detail i want to address that i forgot to do in the modeling and we're going to grab these four edges here i'm going to hit Control shift b and I'm just gonna bevel these a little bit so they're nice and round. And this is just like a little detail that I can add here. Let's undo that. Rotation and scale, there we go. Control, Shift, B, just like that. I'm gonna grab this one and this one and hit J. And I'm gonna grab this one and this one and hit J. And then this bottom one and this top one and hit J. And then this top one and this bottom one and hit J. And now I have all quads again. I could also triangulate this here, but it's not that big of a deal. So I'll leave it. And there we go. We just have like a nice little round bit there. I think it just looks a little bit nicer. And then we can also, if we wanted to get this to be like movie quality prop, we could also smooth it like that with control one. And then I'm also going to just hit L on this and say S shift Z and holding down shift. I'm just going to bring this ever so closely to the surface of the bottle, just like so. There we go. So now it looks like there's really hardly any space in between the bottle and the label, which is more or less what I intended in the first place. And it's looking pretty good. Nice. All right, so now if we rotate around this, there we go. We have created our tonic animation. Now the only thing left to do is to go into our, well, okay, there's a couple things left. We're gonna go into our render engine settings. We're gonna set this to EV. I'm gonna turn on ambient occlusion and screen space reflections just to give it a little extra oomph. We're also going to leave these, these are fine here. Um, we could also, we could, we could tailor these, but I think they're fine by detail, by, by uh, sorry, by where they are in, in, at the current moment. And then for the output, we're going to render PNGs and then we're going to open this up inside of the tonic project folder and save it in anim. So we're going to call this tonic underscore anim, and then it's going to say underscore, and then it will append a number to the end of that. And then we can say render, render animation. Now I'm not going to do that here because that's going to take too much time. So I will do that after the fact and just show the animation on the screen when it's done. Um, you could also render it not as a PNG sequence, but also as an MPEG video or AVI if you want to do that. There's also um, OpenEXR and different formats that you can use there if you're more inclined to use those. And now I'm going to show you how to set up the wireframe rendering for this. So I'm just going to save this really quickly. The way that we do that is we come down here in the render settings option to freestyle. Let me turn that on. We scroll down here and we look at our freestyle settings. Uh, I think my line thickness should be a three pixel line, or maybe a two pixel line. And let's head over to, let's see. Freestyle, oh, change that, yep. So freestyle is a sort of non-physically based rendering setting that's going on inside of Blender, which is pretty useful. Uh, we're gonna find more information about it here in the view passes layer, I believe it's called, yeah, layer, or view layer properties. Um, and then we want to have, let's see, a, a line set. We're gonna change that. We're going to change it from, we don't want image border or visibility, we want edge. We don't want silhouette or border. Um, or crease, we want edge markings. And so we're gonna go back in here, we're gonna select the whole thing, hit Control E and say mark freestyle edge. And now every edge that we just marked should show a line. So we're gonna go to free line style, it's gonna be a plain line. And then we can uh, set the color here. And the color, maybe we want to have it be uh, bright red. So we'll turn this on, turn, or actually no, let's do a bright green or a bright blue. So it has some contrast. Something like this, perhaps. 
uh, that should contrast the background. So now if I go into the camera and I say render, render image, we're not going to render the animation. You can see it does actually render that out. Uh, the only problem, however, is it's giving me some issues. So we need some image-based lighting. So if I, I know I'm kind of rambling now, just bear with me. So right now, how we're viewing this is in our uh, viewport shading. What we want to do is, or, sorry, our material preview mode. And how we want to do this is to display it as a render. So this is actually what's going to be rendered out. So it's also good that I told you not to render that animation yet or that I didn't tell you to render it yet uh, because we need to add an additional lighting. And the way that we're going to do that is actually by coming back to our window here. And there's a brilliant website called hdrihaven.com. And it's got a bunch of image based lighting or high dynamic range images. That's what HDRI stands for. We're going to use this courtyard one because I find that it works well. Scroll on down, find the uh, 1K or 2K one. I'll work with the 1K one because it's a smaller image. We're just going to save that. And then I'm going to move that into my tonic texture folder. So there we go. It's in there. And then we come back to Blender. We go to our shading and then we switch this over here from object to world. And actually we can do that right here in the world settings. We're going to click this color button and say environment texture. That's going to plop this over here and say open. And then we're going to go text and then courtyard and load that in there. And now if we hit this render option, you can see now it's rendering the courtyard image. So let's head back for a layout. And then here, what we can do is up in here, we can find film and say transparent. That'll turn off the background. But now this is more or less what it's going to render like. So if I hit render, render image, You'll see that there it renders over the top. I want to change that a little bit because it's still doing some stuff that I don't like. So let's make this a one pixel line here. Switch on over to our render passes and say, hmm, maybe silhouette we can turn on. Uh, contour maybe we can turn on. And let's see, select edges based on visibility. Okay, maybe we'll leave that on. And image border. Yeah, let's turn that on and see if it helps. And then we'll save this again and say render and render image. And there we go. So now we have the lines that show the actual geometry of our mesh because we selected those lines and we kind of told them what to do. We are having a strange mesh intersection here. And that's because uh, it's a, this mesh is a little, the, the label mesh is a little too close to the bottle mesh. So maybe we need to go in and fix that over here. So let's grab this label mesh like this and we could put a cut in the middle of it there we go and see giving us problems if i say s x ah okay so there was the problem is it's actually the middle of this is sticking out let's turn off the subdivision surface modifier <laughs> And there's our problem. Uh, again, why I mentioned that it's not really a good idea to model with the subdivision surface modifier on. So there we go. If I go back now and do it this way, that looks much better. And now I can say, and I just saved it. I can say render image. And there we go. It's fixed now. So there you have it. Now we can render a wireframe image there. And then if we, of course, go and do this, uh, say render animation, it will render the entire animation with the wireframe. And um, if you're going to do that, make sure that you change the save location uh, in the output here under our output settings to the wireframe anim um, folder. And yeah, just hit hit uh, render and it will render out the sequence or the, the image. And then you'll have to figure out how to assemble that. I can do a future video on that. But essentially, if you have access to After Effects or another similar um, video editing software, what you can do is you can um, assemble them inside of After Effects. So you could in import the PNG image sequence and have it play an image sequence there. So I hope that this was an informative series. You've learned many, many things. You've learned how to model this entire mesh from scratch. You've learned out how to uh, how to UV unwrap this, how to optimize a UV unwrap, how to create materials and mess with their settings, how to create textures, how to assemble it all inside of Blender. You've even learned how to pack textures and make a more efficient image map. And I also taught you how to create a rotating camera, um, how to uh, create a, an animation with the rotating camera and how to do that, as well as how to... Um, 
create a wireframe uh, render and animation. And then of course, uh, I should mention very briefly that if you wanted to render this without the wireframe, all we have to do is come back up in here and turn off freestyle right there and say render. And actually let me pause this, make sure like this back to the beginning and say render, render image. And then there we go, we have no more freestyle wireframe. You can also add lights into your scene if you're really inclined to do that. Sometimes it's better to have a little bit of extra light. We can scale this up and change the light settings to say 100 watts, or we can go crazy and say 500 watts and really add some brightness there. Maybe move it forward just so that way there's some light in front or behind the mesh. We can also put it behind. Um, we can also do it like this. this at 2000 just like that and now we have some sort of a silhouette going on we can also turn on bloom to add to that although we want to turn down our bloom intensity we don't want too much just leave it down low maybe increase the threshold there the radius and the threshold so that way it's not super super bright just like that and there we can attach this light with a shift click to this as well and say parent that to the object. And now as we play our animation, it will rotate around just like that. And so there you have it. You have a tonic animation, you have a wireframe, you've learned how to create an entire 3D model and it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. We can also uh, turn off the subdivision surface modifier because it's not entirely necessary. But there you go. So it's a lot. I understand it's a lot, but I'll keep it here for your educational viewing. I hope you learned something. If you do, please consider supporting me, um, engaging in the comment section, subscribing, liking, etc., hitting the notification bell. I really appreciate the people who take the time to view my content, and I'm happy to help in any way that I can. So I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.